I literally always want to start these videos back at it again at Krispy Kreme. Do people even get this reference anymore? Do I need to download the vine and put it over here so that people remember what I'm talking about? Back at it again at Krispy Kreme. Anyway, back at it again with LSAT games. I am continuing on in Prep Test 90. This is the third game, questions 12 through 17 from Prep Test 90, a recently released LSAT. And let's go ahead and jump into it. An academic society will hold exactly six meetings during the next school year, three in the fall semester, three in the spring semester. Each meeting will be hosted by one of five cities, H, M, O, T, and V. So pretty clearly, those are our elements, H, M, O, T, and V, with each city hosting at least one meeting. Now this is interesting right away. We've got six spaces, but five elements, and every city has to go at least once. So basically, we're gonna have one of these five cities that goes a sixth time, and that accounts for our six full spaces. No city will host more than one meeting per semester. The following constraints hold. And then we get rules, which two of them are very obviously conditional statements, but even that third one, it's not really a conditional statement, I guess, but it looks an awful lot to me like a placeholder. And being that we have two groups in this case, I am thinking this is best set up as an in and out game, or in this case, a fall spring game where we have three spaces in the fall and three spaces in the spring. Of course, an in and out game is this special kind of grouping game where you have exactly two groups. And because you have exactly two groups, it really limits the way that the elements can be distributed. This one is a little bit strange though, in that one of our elements can be used more than once. And so I think that's probably gonna throw some wrinkles into how we represent these conditional clues. Like take this first one, for example. If Honolulu hosts a meeting in the fall, then Montreal must also host a meeting Meeting in the fall. If this were a pure in and out game where the fall side was the inside and the spring side was the outside, we could simply represent this clue like this. If H is in the fall, meaning for us, if it's in, then Montreal is also in the fall. Montreal is also in. And then we would immediately do the contrapositive, which would be if M is out, H is out. In this case, if M is is in the spring, then H is also in the spring. However, I don't think we can actually do that in this case, precisely because I could reuse one of these elements. The contrapositive here actually is not saying if M is in the spring, it's saying if M is not in the fall, then H would not be in the fall. And I have to be careful because M could be in both the spring and the fall. So just because M is in the spring, that doesn't mean that it's not in the fall. So I think what I'm gonna do here to account for this is I'm gonna use subscripts. If H is in the fall, M is in the fall, and then I'm going to be really careful with my contrapositives. I'm not going to say the opposite of this is if M is in the spring. I'm going to go ahead and specifically symbolize if M is not in the fall, then H is not in the fall. Could be in the spring, but we're not 100% sure based on the way that whichever element goes twice works out. Next clue says if Vancouver hosts a meeting in the spring, so I'm going to set that up if V is in the spring, then Tampa must also host a meeting in the spring. So V is in the spring, Tampa's in the spring. But again, I want to be careful here. I'm not going to say if Tampa is in the fall, although that's what we would do on a typical in and out game. I'm going to say if Tampa is not in the spring, then V is not in the spring. Finally, in each semester, either M or V or both must host a meeting. So I think the best way to do this is with a simple placeholder. In the fall, one of these slots has to be taken up by M or V. In the spring, one of these slots has to be taken up by M or V. As is typically the case with in and out games, this does not mean only one of M or V. It could be M or V or both, but I wouldn't necessarily write that down. In general, that is what placeholders should mean to you in an in and out game. Do we have any deductions here? Of course, we've already done our con contrapositives. And on an in and out game, we don't generally want to try to connect our conditional clues anyway, because those deductions typically naturally happen whenever we're setting up a specific scenario. But even if we wanted to here, I'm not seeing any of our elements get reused in the conditional clues. Obviously, if something like V were the placeholder in the spring, it would bring T along with it. But again, that's just going to happen naturally as we work out any scenario that happens to have V in the spring. O is our least restricted element, but I don't really see where O has to end up in this case. So I could be missing something, but I'm not seeing any specific deductions here beyond the contrapositives we've already done. And it looks like we don't have a pick a clue question either. Number 12 does not ask us for something like a complete and accurate list of who goes in the fall or who goes in the spring. Instead, it starts us off right away with a specific question. So I think it's probably best here if we simply work our way into the game with an actual scenario here. So let's work out number 12. Three blanks in the fall, three blanks in the spring. If the only meeting that Montreal hosts 
is in the spring, which one of the following could be true? All right, well, one key here is only meeting. So in this case, M is only going in the spring, which is another way of saying that M will not go in the fall, which means that contrapositive applies. So we can go ahead and put H not in the fall, which in this particular game, every city has to go, means that H is definitely in the spring. Because M can only go once, that means that my placeholder M slash V is gonna have to be V in the fall, but I wanna be careful here. I was about to say, you know, could I put V in the spring as well? Some element is gonna go twice, right? But notice, if I put V in the spring right now, I would also have to put T in the spring, and I don't have room for that. So what that tells me is that this other element in the spring is not V, but as far as whether it's O or T, it's not clear to me that it has to be one or the other. It could be T. Remember, when you read these conditional clues, you cannot go backwards on the arrow. Just because we see T in the spring, that does not mean that V has to have been in the spring. V being in the spring is one way to guarantee T is in the spring, but there's nothing in the game that suggests it's the only way to guarantee that outcome. So I think I'm just gonna set up either O or T. Now we've already said it cannot be either H or M here in the fall. So really there are only two other elements it could be, has to be T and O in the fall. And then one of the two of those is gonna be the element that goes twice in the spring. Which one of the following could be true? A, Honolulu hosts meetings in both semesters. That is not possible. Tampa hosts meetings in both semesters. That is possible. B is your could be true for number 12. So this is why we like to start with the specific questions. We're kind of working our way into the game now. Seems roughly like a regular in and out game. Let's keep going with some more specific questions. Number 13, if Omaha hosts two of the meetings, which one of the following must be true? Well, let's go ahead and get that down. One, two, three blanks on the fall side, three blanks on the spring side. Omaha is going to be the one element to go twice. This does mean that we're going to have a coin flip now between M and V because no other element can go twice once we've had a single element go twice. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to try this out as two different scenarios. One with M in the fall and V in the spring, and then the other one with V in the fall and M in the spring and see what else I can figure out. For example, for sure, if V is in the spring, T is in the spring. And so that's very simple. It's got to be H, M in the fall in that case. In the other scenario, I think we can go ahead and activate these rules. So the contrapositives should act normally, like normal for an in and out game, anytime the element in question is not going twice. Like right now to say M is not in the fall. Well, we know for sure M is not in the fall. And in this case, that must mean that M is in the spring. In fact, of course, that's why we're talking about it. M is in the spring. When M is in the spring, now that we know it's not the element going twice and we don't have any weird thing going on with this clue with, with the contrapositives, we can say for sure H is going to be not in the fall with it. That is in this case in the spring. And of course, T ends up in the other slot. So basically the only thing we're deciding now is where this HMTV block ends up going. This was a must be true. Uh huh. We don't have anything other than O being used twice that was guaranteed. That's a little strange. H hosts a meeting in the fall. That was not a must be true because we could switch them around. T hosts a meeting in the fall, same thing. M hosts a meeting in the spring, not necessarily. Oh, okay, we got some pairings here. H and V host meetings in the same uh, season as each other. No, same semester as each other. And so this has to be E. But because this game is a little weird, I might just double check quickly. T and V host meetings in the same semester. Yes, no matter what, T and V are going to have to be together. So that does make good sense. We've got a couple more specific questions. So that's another nice thing about this game. Lots of specific questions. 16 says, if Tampa hosts two of the meetings, which one of the following, what was it, could be true. We've got a could be true. So let's put Tampa in both the fall and the spring. Again, I'm feeling like let's go ahead and set up both scenarios with Tampa being the element that's used twice. MNV can't be the element that's used twice. And so that has to be a true coin flip between them. So let's see what happens when it's M in the fall, V in the spring, or vice versa. And again, I should be, a ooh, okay. I was about to say, I should be able to treat these contrapositives normally, but actually T is the element going twice. So here's where I have to be really careful. The contrapositive of this clue that says if V is in the spring, then T is in the spring. Again, on a typical in and out game, we could simply say if T is in the fall, V is in the fall. But that's not the case here. What this says is if T is not in the spring, then V is not in the spring. Well, 
since t is the element that's being used twice, that's clearly not true. So we can't actually do something like eliminate the scenario by saying v is not supposed to be in the spring according to this contrapositive. In fact, of course, t is in the spring, so this clue really is not going to apply. I mean, I mean, it does apply, I guess, technically, if v is in the spring, t is in the spring, but that's happening, that's fine. We can say for sure if m is not in the fall, so this one does apply normally, h cannot be in the fall. So over here where m is in the spring, h would also have to be in the spring, and so then o would have to be in the fall. But in this first scenario, h does not have to be in the fall. Again, just because m is in the fall, we can't go backwards on the arrow. And so I think all I can do is set up a coin flip. It's either o in the fall, h in the spring, or h in the fall, o in the spring instead. This was, again, it could be true, h and v both host meetings in the fall. Well, although I do see h and v both in the fall, they're not in the fall at the same time. So I don't think that would work. M and O both host meetings in the fall. Yeah. That should be a possibility, and so I think number 16 is B. And again, we really do want to be out of the habit of checking these other answers. There must be something wrong with C, D, or E, unless I've just really messed up this game, which is possible. It's kind of a little bit of a weird in and out game in as much as we are reusing one of the elements, but I feel like we're moving along pretty well. Let's just keep going. 17, if H hosts a meeting in the fall, which of the following must be true? H hosts a meeting in the fall. Well, of course, for sure, M is going to be joining it because that's that's what this clue here tells me. Um, can I do something with the T is not in the spring, V is not in the spring? T could be the element here that goes twice, so it's not necessarily the case. You know, I'm trying to think, do, do can I say something like T can't be in the fall? But I could imagine a scenario where T is in both the fall and the spring, and then it's V and O that fill out the spring, so that's a possibility. I mean, obviously we've got the placeholder, v M could also be the element that goes twice, and you could imagine a scenario where M and V end up in the spring. This feels a little broad to me to set up a bunch of scenarios. Was this a, a must be true? I guess maybe because it's a must be true, I feel like I should be able to figure out a little bit more. I guess let's go ahead and test it out. What if it's M that's in the spring? What if it's V that's in the spring? We know for sure that those two things have to happen. Of course, if it's V that's in the spring, T is gonna end up going with it, and so T would be in the spring in that scenario. If it's M in the spring though, V could be in either the fall or the spring, because I could imagine a situation where it goes V, T, and O. Is there any other possibility? Could I put V in the fall instead? And then T and O are in the spring? I mean, that also seems like a possibility. Could I put T in the spring and then V and O? Ooh, no, that is not possible, because if V is in the spring, T has to be in the spring. Okay, so in that scenario, it's either O, V, T, or V, T, O. In this other situation, situation. We got H, M, blank, V, T. O has to go somewhere. So O is one of these two things. But then, I don't know. I mean, I think V could go in the fall right now. I think T could go in the fall right now. I'm not seeing a lot. I don't know. Let's see. Let's go to the answer choices. A, Omaha hosts a meeting in the fall. Well, no, that's not a must be because Omaha could be over here in the spring. B, Montreal hosts a meeting in the spring. No, we figured out it could have been something like VTO in the spring. So it can't be B. Omaha most hosts a meeting in the spring. Well, again, no, because it could have been this OVT scenario. So it can't be C. Tampa hosts a meeting in the spring. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. No matter what, the only scenarios we worked out, Tampa had to be in the spring. So that is our must be true. All right. Just two general questions left. I guess we'll start with number 14. Which one of the following cannot be an accurate partial matching of the cities with the semesters in which they host? meetings. Uh, partial matching. Okay, have we ever seen Honolulu in the fall, and then Honolulu and Vancouver? So basically, have we ever seen Honolulu go twice? Um, we actually have never seen Honolulu go twice, so I guess I'm gonna hold on to answer choice A. Montreal in the fall, and then HT in the spring? Well, yeah, that was a possibility. You can see that here. Montreal in the fall, HT in the spring, so we can go ahead and cross off answer choice B. Omaha in the fall, MT in the spring? I feel like we've definitely seen that one. Yeah, Omaha in the fall, MT in the spring. We've seen that before, so we can get rid of C. HT in the fall, M in the spring. Hmm. 
Have not seen that either. So I guess I'm going to keep D. H, V in the fall, and then V in the spring. Did we ever reuse V? I feel like we could have here. We could have done H, V in the fall, and then it would have just been VTO, but V would have been in the spring. So I'm going to cross off answer choice E. Okay, so basically I've got two answer choices. I'm just going to pick one of them and try it. If it works, it's not the answer here. If for some reason it doesn't work, it is the answer here. I suppose I'll just sketch it out here real quick. And for no particular reason, I'm going to pick A. If we put H in the fall, H, V in the spring, can we make that work? Well, if H is in the fall, M is in the fall, that takes care of the MV block. And then I just need some way for it to work. Oh, wait, I do want to apply my V rule. If V is in the spring, T is in the spring. So T would go here. O would go there. I guess just by coincidence, we never had H go twice. Maybe H could have been twice here, but it certainly seems like that's possible. So I'm going to cross off A and circle answer choice D. That must be the one that can't work. Number 15, which of the following cannot be in either semester the group of cities hosting the three meetings? So again, who has never gone together? Have we ever seen HMT? Yes. Wait, did they say fall or spring? Did they specify? No, in either semester. HMT was spring semester on 16, so clearly they could go together. HMV? Mm, uh, I've never seen it. I'm thinking that might be the answer because of course HM and V end up in so many clues plus they're the placeholder. But let's keep going. H-O-V, have we ever seen H-O-V together anywhere? H-O-V, I've never seen them all together, so I guess I have to keep C as well. H-T-V, have we ever seen H-T-V? Well, actually we just saw that on the thing we worked out for 14, right? So no, that's possible. M-O-V, yeah, unfortunately I've not, I don't see M-O-V anywhere either. All right, so we just gotta try some of these out. H-M-T, where could I try and put H-M-T? Well, I think it most makes most sense to try and put them in the fall real quick, because of course that H-M clue. H-M-T would mean that for sure O and V have to go on the outside, but then after that is V is in the spring, T is in the spring, so I would put T out there, and that looks fine to me. We have the placeholder M and V. We are obeying our conditional clues. I don't see any problem problems there. So actually, no, that seems all right. H, O, and V, can we put them together? Well, we wouldn't want to do that on the fall side, because when H is in the fall, M is in the fall. So I guess I'm going to have to try that out here, and I see a problem. Uh, if V is in the spring, then T is supposed to be in the spring with it, which obviously can't be true here. But again, if I tried to put H, O, V in the fall, when H is in the fall, M is supposed to be in the fall. So 15 must be C. All right, I feel like that kind of picked up in difficulty at the end. Let's hope that we got them. B, E, D, C, B, D, C, B, D. Bed, C, B, D. Bed, C, B, D. Bed, C, B, D. Yes, we got him. All right, what do I think about that? Um, I feel like this video ended up a little bit on the long side, no? Maybe not too long. Kind of an interesting section so far. We had two order games so far. Neither was particularly difficult, but in each case, I feel like the game has had a little bit of a wrinkle. We had a two-dimensional order game where we could reuse the second level as many times as we wanted. We had a kind of classic two-dimensional order game, which felt pretty easy, if I remember correctly, up until that weird complex equivalence question, number 11. And then we go into this game, mostly straightforward in and out game, though again, the fact that we could reuse one of the elements kind of threw off some of the typical contrapositive style deductions that we make in an in and out game. So, you know, I'd say moderately difficult section so far. I don't know that pacing wise, we're going to be super off from 35 minutes in the end. Uh, but I do think it depends a little bit on whether we get lucky with a nice easier game for the last one that does happen sometimes. It looks to me looking at the clues like this is probably an order game, but also looking at the clues, uh, plays can be performed more more than once, six plays in eight days, as I read the uh, setup there briefly. So I don't know, I guess we'll have to see. That's it for me today. I'll take a look at this game in a few days, maybe by the end of the week uh, here in Dallas, it's getting cold. Power might go out. I might need to bring my uh, green screen home with me because I may not end up at school for the next couple days. But either way, I'll try and have another game for you soon. If you have any questions for me, if you have a game you want me to move up in the order as I work through all 400-ish of these officially released LSAC games, comment down below, let me know, and otherwise I will see y'all next time.